Um, I tried mine, but I've not gone very far yet because I was having network fluctuation last night. Okay. Uh, anybody else? Uh, which one did you do? Which one did you try out? I tried uh, creating the Facebook page, and then the the Instagram. He said we should do it business. So I don't know if it is the normal way of opening the Instagram. It's or... the normal way. It's the normal way of creating an Instagram account. You just after creating the account and setting it up, you just go and turn it to professional. Uh, yeah, it's just quite simple. You're even going to see where you can change it. All those things are not difficult to do. Right. Uh, but it's okay, at least you give it a shot. Uh, at least you give it a shot. That's like the major thing. Okay, who else? Any other person? Okay, you, uh, Emmanuel, you did, but you have a link to the Instagram to the Facebook page, okay. Who else, who else, who else, who else? Any other person? Has the number even increased or we are still the same? So, okay, increasing. Six more people have joined us. You know, six, four more people. Any other person, give it a shot, try it out, did something, anybody? Well, over 20 when I gave that, when I did that stuff and asked everybody to try it out. This one only two people have indicated. It's the only two people that tried it. Is that what I should believe? Me. I think more more must have done is because they are not present yet. Mm. They like coming late. <laughs> All right, it's okay. Um, I'm sorry, sir. Please, sir, how can I delete the previous uh, Facebook page that I created? Because I know I, I told you about um. Uh, one of the Facebook page that I created was um, a restriction. And then I've been having issues trying to link it with um, Instagram. So I created another one yesterday, but I haven't linked it with my Instagram um, account. So I also ask, how can I delete the previous one? Oh, okay, let me see if I can see that. But I think deleting it is not really difficult. But let me just check to be sure they have not changed their whole algorithm because they changed things a lot. Yep, so. Hold on, just give me a second. Okay, sir. Up. So this is a page. And we have on that settings. Okay. Um, I think I can map that in some time. I've been trying to, I've tried all means to delete the page. I've gone to settings, gone to privacy, but I'm not even seeing anything like that. Yes, I know. Sometimes it's quite difficult to delete a page. I understand you very well. Uh, it's quite difficult, right? I understand. Let me just swap it to my main account because I think from my main account, I can be able to delete the page, not to the page itself. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. 
I know I've 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 tried. I'm not I'm not deleted. I've tried, I've not deleted the page before because of course most of the pages I'm working on are pages owned by other people. So I can't go start. <laughs> I can't go start deleting someone's page, right? Well, let me see. I think there's a way. I saw that recently. Okay. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I think it's quite difficult to delete it actually because trying to see I know you can delete I know someone you can delete a page, but I'm trying to see how I know I've come across that before. So this is this page. There's no post available. There's nothing in it. Oh. Uh, I think if I check that, I'll check that, I'll check around and then I'll hit you back on that. Okay, no problem, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. I mean, okay, we have increased to 20. That's good. Um, the number has improved. Well done. That, that is just, um, give me a second. I'm trying to cross the love.
Right. Um, yeah. So. Um, yeah. I'm not going anywhere. No, no, no. Can you guys hear me? We can hear you. We can hear you, sir. Sorry. Thank, thank you. I think. Um, I don't know what's going on with my book. All right. So yeah. Um, today I talk about talk about Facebook and everything about Facebook today. And um, and I told us how to create a Facebook page, of course, a Facebook business page. And also, I told us how um, to create an Instagram account, an Instagram business account, and a business an Instagram account, mutually, right? So you decide what you want the username to be and what you want the Instagram page to look like, and then. You can link it up with your Facebook page so that you have both of your business, both of your meta business assets, because we call them meta business assets because they all belong to the same company being meta. Um, you now link them up together and you can always manage them simultaneously. Um, from um you manage each other simultaneously, right? Although um you can um of course manage them from the meta business assets. And um yeah, that's that basically on that was what we showed yesterday. Aside the other thing, talking about how to use your social media um presence well, um drafting a content calendar, which is important for the kind of content you want to be putting out. I also talked about um, the kind of content that um basically you should focus on putting out to your audience. Um of course professional content to which are like informational and educational content, they are all other professional because you want to show them that um you are you first of all those contents first of all speak to them and try to solve some of their um some of their some of their some of their problems um those problems are those um of course um try to solve some of their problems um and of course make sure an authority in that field or in that niche um showing them that oh okay i i, I know this um, particular um field very well so that they can turn to you whenever they have problems and also um, they will think of you as the go-to person when they have a need that requires your 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 solution, right? So that is like um one of the major um things in in creating those kind of contents, and they should even be more because, of course, if they are shareable, if they are informational enough, they are definitely going to be shareable. So your audience can be able to share them to other people to um also look at it, and in that way, you're already building your um, brand visibility and also increasing your brand reach and improving your brand awareness. Um, yeah, we talked about um, entertain, of course, in, in entertaining content as well, and uh, personal content rather, um, where you want to show them that you have your your brand has a face, right? Your business has a face. Your business has a personal aspect, so that they can connect with it like humans. In as much as you're giving them so much information at all at all the time. You also want them to know that okay, um, this brand is a is a brand of human beings, and we have humans here. I have myself. I take myself on a treat, or so if I'm the owner of the business, my staff. I take care of my staff. We go on a treat. We relate together in very very good terms, like um humans, right? So you want to also do that, and then, and then the next one was um brand content, right? Where brand content where you want to show them that I want to push your brand, brand promotional content. You want to promote your brand, promote your business. Those ones are now promotional, right? But those should be like the list of things you do, um, list of things you do in your content calendar. Um, you, should, you want to first of all become an authority. You want to first of all become a go-to person, someone that they can trust and they can want to patronize or do business with you, right? And then um, that's like the major thing you want to be first. So while you're now doing that, um, um, while you're doing that, you can now also um, become someone that they trust 
and um sorry you become someone that they trust a brand that they trust that they can trust well you are while you're, whilst you're still trying to push your or that the other part of your brand right so those are basically the things we talked about and then we looked at facebook how to create a facebook page a facebook business page if you want to do uh, if you want to um have a business page on 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 facebook right and i said it that the meta business um the facebook business page is going to be under your facebook account right so you want to be able to keep your facebook account protected at, at all costs um let me i think I, I said i was going to show something let me check i said i wanted to show us how to protect our facebook accounts most of us should know how to do this, right? Most of us should know how to do this, but uh, let's see. Uh, so this is my account. So, I did that with my phone though. So let me see how I can do it on the system. So go to hold on, I'm going to share my screen a bit. So I'm going to share my screen a bit, right? Yeah, so. Yeah, okay. Um good. Uh let me just share my screen really quickly. I've seen it. So I'm sharing my screen now. Hold on. Right, so um it's going to share in a bit you know that there is a lot of um what they call them now a lot of hackers and people are trying to hamper facebook accounts every day every time so you don't want that to happen to your account right you want your account to be protected at all costs <sighs> my internet connection is unstable So you want to be able to protect your 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 account, right? By having um something like we call it, it's a two factor authentication. You can also do it on your WhatsApp, right? You want to also protect your WhatsApp from being hacked. Sure, and ensures that um if someone is trying to access to your account the wrong way, um someone who doesn't have access to your account, they will require um a certain security, a certain level of security to be able to um access your account. So they can't just access your account without your permission. So if it is not you, then Facebook is going to bounce them out. Or, of course, Facebook will send you, send you a notification. And then you can now decide if that is you or that is not you, right? So this is my Facebook account now. <laughs> this is my Facebook account. And, of course, I have a two-factor authentication. 
on this account. So let me just show those of us who do not know how to do that quickly how to do it, right? These are, of course, all of these pages, friends, memories, blah, blah, blah. It's even easier to do it with your smartphone than with a system. Right? The system might even be more um, tricky, but with a smartphone, you can do it very easily. So this is my account. I go to account. I mean, first things first, then you go to settings and privacy. And of course, settings and privacy, you come down to settings. Privacy is what you want to see and what you don't want to see on Facebook. If you want that where you want to be mentioned and where you don't want to be mentioned, that's for privacy, right? And of course, um, that is there on its own. Uh, but yeah, we want to look at these settings. Now, this is settings. Um, you can see my Facebook information. This is mostly privacy now, right? We are providing information by category, all of this. This is not what we want to look at now. Um, now look at look at this point of my screen where my mouse is. You can see Meta Account Center. Manage your connected experiences and account settings across Meta Technologies. You can see personal details, password and security, ad preferences, payments. So personal details is to manage your personal um, details, right? So I want to go to password and security. So you click on password and security. And you can see my accounts that I have. This is, uh, this is, of course, my Facebook and Instagram account are connected together. So you can see uh, Facebook and Instagram. You can see this other one that I also have under the same email. I can also add any account, right? And you can see uh, accounts again. You can see account settings, accounts, personality. These are accounts now, right? These are the profiles I have, connected experiences, password and security, your informational information, ad preference payments, blah, 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 blah. So you want to go to password and security, right? And when you click on password and security, you can see here, uh, you can change your password. You can do it to factor authentication. Uh, and this is where you want to focus on, right? So this is a two factor authentication. If I click on it, you can see choose an account to set up two factor authentication. So I have my Facebook, I have my Instagram account. So if you want to set up for your Facebook account, I mean, that's if they are connected. If they are not connected, you only see Facebook. Most time, most times, since they are all under the same meta technology, they will, they, will, they will likely be connected, right? So you choose the account you want for your two-factor authentication. And of course, they will ask you for your password to be sure that you are the one that wants to set up two-factor authentication on your own account. So you need to know your password, right? Uh, let me just put my password. I put that in my password. Yeah, so that's my password, right? So you can see that this is where you can set up two factor authentication for your Facebook account. Now you see two factor authentication is on because I have it on, right? You now see you will now ask for a login, we we'll ask for a login code or a login code anytime you log in on a device we don't recognize. What this means is, of course, definitely if someone is trying to hack your account, they will not do it with your phone. They'll be somewhere else trying to break into your account, trying to break down your security walls, right? So you see here that Facebook have said, if you do this too fast, because I have it on, I already have my own on. You can see two-factor authentication is on. If it's not on on yours, you will definitely see that it is not on. Now you see here that they will ask for a login code anytime I log in on a device that they do not recognize. So if somebody's trying to log in, I have woken up one morning, very early in the morning, around past 4 a.m., and I mean, I, I was I was asleep, and I woke up around four a.m. Only for me to check my um um my I opened my phone, and then I saw is it an email? Was it an email they sent to me or a notification that um there was a login? There was there was um there was someone was trying to log into my account within a very very strange location that I do not know. And the person was asleep by then. So immediately they asked if I was the one. And I had to say, no, I'm not the one. So they would immediately bounce that person out. But they would immediately bounce that person out, right? And, and ask you to change your password for better security. So you can now change your password to something else. So you see that what they do now is that they will send me a code. You can choose how to get your login codes. So you better, you, you can choose that they should send you a code to your phone number. This is my phone. My phone number is here. So you can see, I set it up, text message. 
you added this number to your account and enabled for two-factor authentication. So it means that if someone is trying to send me, if, if someone is trying to log into my, if I'm trying to log into my account, or there's a new login to my account on a device, they will send me a text message. Uh, it, it could write um, on this my phone number to verify that I am the one that's trying to log in. You can see that I can change my number. I can turn it off. And I don't want to turn it off. If you turn off the factor authentication, your account will no longer have an extra layer of protection. You can see that, right? So a lot of accounts have been hacked recently because people do not know how to set up this on their account. So you want to set this up so that your account is protected. You don't lose so much of things because your account was not protected. You can see if I turn it off, they are saying, they are saying your account will no longer have that extra layer of protection which of course is not what you want for a business. You don't want to use your account. You don't even want to use your account, right? I've had several issues sometimes where um, my account was trying to be hacked. Uh, there was a time it was a Twitter account. I don't know someone, I think someone had part that Twitter account. I don't know how they got access to it. And I saw some posts that I did not make on the account. Uh, I had to, and it's a good thing that I'm always checking. I had a social media manager I was not checking the account. And imagine to check the account to see what was going on. It's only for me to find out that I'm seeing posts that I did not make. I called social media manager and I asked, Madam, are you the one that made these posts? Because they were looking so foreign. She said, No, I'm not the one. I thought you were the one. I'm like, You thought I was the one. I don't like make such a post on a page that is not relevant to the business. You see, where people have a problem with communication, you saw something that doesn't, that looks foreign. And instead of calling to ask or text, sending me a text to ask if I was the one that sent it, you said you thought. Don't think. If not, if I had not acted fast, that account would have maybe been, who knows, God knows what. So I had to change um, password, put an extra layer of protection on the account. So you want to do this on your Facebook account. You can see this, right? If I turn it off now, I will no longer have it, but I will leave it on. You can add a, you can add a different number, a phone number. Basically, mainly use your phone number, right? A phone number that's always close to you so that you can have that two-factor authentication. Um, that's for that. You can change your password here. Yeah, this one is quite easy. I mean, you'll be required to put in your old password and then they will confirm that that old password is your own. So that they want to confirm that you are the person that is trying to change the password. Um, you put in your old password and then you put in your new password and confirm the new password. Why is it taking time? Network. Right, so yeah, so you see now you can choose an account to make changes to your password, right? You see, this is my Facebook account. If I select it, I can you see current password, right? It was updated on the eighth of May. I changed my password recently. So you can put your your current password, then you type a new password, and then you retype your new password, and definitely they're going to change your password for you. Of course, they have told you how your combination should be. Your passport must be at least six characters. Should include the combination. You see now, most platforms are now telling you how they want your password to be. Unlike before, that you can generally select anything. So it was easy for people to even get someone's password. Sometimes people can just put their date of birth. Sometimes people just put their name and they type it fully, right? But and those. Passwords are not strong. You don't have a strong layer of protection. But with this, you can see now so many um, um, platforms now require that you put at least six characters, which would include the combination of numbers, letters, and special characters. So your password should include numbers, number, um, should include special characters like full stop, comma, hashtag, at, dollar, naira sign, whatever. Right, and then of course you should also include. Um, they didn't even include what some some accounts will ask you to also include a capital letter. So you want to create passwords that are strong, right? You want to create passwords with a capital letter, with small letters, with special characters, and then with numbers, right? So you want to do that. Um, oh, this is saved login. Uh, okay, that is taking me to another window. Yeah, so this is to save your login info. 
what this means is that you will not need to enter your password the next time you log in on this browser, this particular browser. And if I want to see my login details on this particular laptop I'm using now, I will just save it from here. You can see remove your account. You need to enter your email or phone number the next time you log in. That means I want to remove my account from this particular browser, right? Remove saved other devices and browsers. Look at the browsers that I've saved my login info on, right? You can see the move from this account of This one last use of Kuba Dodge. These are still my devices, right? Yeah, I think this is my this is my other phone. This is my other phone. My other phone as well. Yeah. So you can see that um you can remove them from any device. So immediately you remove it from that device. Maybe you maybe you maybe you, maybe you sold your phone, right? And and or maybe you even lost your phone and you do not have um, an opportunity to um remove it when before you maybe sold it or lost it so you know nigeria is hard now so people are selling properties <laughs> so, so you maybe something happened when you sold your phone you can just log into another device and of course be able to remove it from that device right remove it you can tap on this remove login you go from unknown right you if i tap on it it's loading up. Um, taking time. You shall catch the drift. That's like the major thing. So, um, if you understand. To understand what I'm saying is thing, right? I it's taking too much time. I don't know. She's by running checks across apps, devices. My my voice is not clear. Now wow. Who else is not hearing me, please? If my voice is clear, can you all hear me? Are you all listening to what I'm saying, like catching it. Please respond, so I don't know. It's important that we respond and like, we follow up. Because this is important as well. Hello, can, can can everybody hear me? It's breaking. Is it clear now? Yes, I can hear you. Is it clear now, please? I want to know. Were you all following what I was saying? Yeah, we were following, but yes, then something was breaking. Sorry? So... Okay, it was breaking. But uh... then it was breaking, so... Yeah. So where did you where did you where did you last hear me clearly? Let me know. Mm, maybe if you can push backwards a little. Okay. So from two factor authentication, which we have talked about how to set up two factor authentication, I'm sure we got we got those parts clearly, right? And we yeah. talked about where you can change password. And of course, I'm sure we got that part clearly as well. And the next thing I was showing was saved login info, um, where you can have, where you can save your login info to a device, which means that you will not need to enter your password on that particular device the next time you're trying to log in. It will automatically open. I have my password saved on this particular my on this my particular laptop, so I don't have to worry about um, logging in with my passcode every time I try to log into my account, 
right? So you can see login info from other devices removed. So I've you can remove, you can see a login info from unknown. Now, if I if I remove this, right, if I tap on this, it's going to remove my login info from any a partic this particular device, right? I don't know the device. I don't even know it. That's the funny thing. Maybe it's one of my other laptops. But once I once you tap on it now, it's going to you can see login info removed from other device with browsers. So you can see that I have removed my login info from these particular devices now. So let's say maybe you you lost your phone. You sold your phone. Are you selling? Because of course Nigeria is hard now. People are selling properties. So maybe you sold your phone and you did not remember to log out your device. Right? You can just simply go to another system, enter your account, go to your settings and brand, then remove the login info from that device. That way, if someone is trying to log into your account on that device, they will have to ask for your, they will have to need your passcode, your password, right? Your password and complete login info. So you can see that I've removed it from here. This is save your login info. Now, if I want to, of course, you can see if you want to save it on this device. If I want to remove my account from this device, I can just tap on remove. That means anytime I log into this device now, I will have to I'm put in my email and, and uh, phone number, email or phone number, right? So that's on that. Now I came down to this place. I came down to security checks, right? You can see review security checks by running checks across apps, devices, and email sent. Now this means that uh, there's a security check that's going to go on. You can see here, uh, see what devices are used to log into your account. Set up alert, right? What this means is that I can set up alerts on different devices on my phone. So I will receive an alert on my phone and I will just tap on yes if I'm the person that allows it. Now let's look at this login alert. Let it open up. Now you can see here, uh, manage how you'd like to be notified about unrecognized logins to your account. You can see in app notification, in app notification. On this particular, on my Facebook account, I set in-app notification and email, which means if someone tries to log into my account or there's a new login in my account, I will get a notification on my app and I'll also get a notification in my email, which I told you guys that I had a notification in my email that someone was trying to log into my Facebook account, right? So you see how I set it up. So this is email. You can turn it off. You can turn it on. This is in-app notification, which means they're going to, I'm going to receive the notification in my app that someone has just logged into my account. This is uh, oh. this is for uh, my Instagram accounts as well, right? These ones are only on in-app notifications, which means I can only get in-app notifications when someone logs in. Why the other one I can get on uh, my email because my email is attached to the account, right? You can see recent emails, right? You can see recent emails, which means any email that I can I I have that is added to this account. So you select the account you want to see recent emails. Now this is my Facebook account and I select it. Uh, you can see my emails that have been attached to this account. Of course, it's my same. It's the same email that I've been using since. Um, security and login email sent in the past year. Did you change your password? Someone may have access to your account, right? So you can see um, the emails that I've had from secure for security reasons. We have sent you any other emails in the past two days, right? We haven't sent you any other emails in the past two days. Um, so these are the emails, right? You can see um, what they look like. So that's like that's on that. Now where, where you're logged in. Now you can see these are the devices I am logged in on. This is my 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 laptop, Windows 10, Windows PC, plus 10 more. You can see Samsung Galaxy e 30 s And of course, this is was my other device. This is my other device. This is my other device as well. You can see where that account is logged in and the same plus 10 more. So you can see where this act you can you, you, if you look at it now, you can see where account activity where your all where your account is currently locked in you can look at it now you see you're currently locked in on these devices this is my phone this is my phone this is also my other phone this is my phone this is my laptop this is the they sometimes they classify um, different phones right in different ways now i can select devices i want to log out on the minute i select i can tap whichever device i want to log out of Right, I can log out of many of these devices. I'm I'm logged in here. I'm logged in here. These are like this is the same device. I don't know why they're showing me double time. It's the same device. This is my other device, right? So you want to check for devices that are strange to you and log out. Now you can see this is where I'm not in Kurudu. I don't know how they are giving me Kurudu here. Yeah. <laughs> this device, right? This is the device I am on. Now if I want to log out, I'll just log out of it, right? So you want to be able to check some of these security checks from time to time. Sometimes. 
just to be sure that your account is not being hampered with to avoid that it's your password is okay the password application is on login alerts are on right so you can see that i have login alerts on and these are all these other tips that they want to give to you so you can see login alerts which is very important i have in-app notifications and email these in-app notifications what it means is as you select it it means that they are going to push an a notification in your app right and of course, um, you can also get a notification to your device, your personal device. Of course, as far as that account is locked into your device, you will get a notification. Uh, like me, if I want to log into my 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 um my account, I only get a notification most times that it will just pop up on my on my on my on my phone, and it will tell me um um someone um your account is being logged in at so and so place. Are you the one? If I'm the one, I'll just simply tap yes. If I'm not the one, I just simply tap no. It's, it's that easy. Once I tap yes, it's going to automatically allow that account to be locked in at that device. And if I tap no, it's going to lock the person out immediately and ask me to change my password because it has now feel that there's a potential threat, right? So all of these things, you want to be able to set them up to avoid stories that touch the heart. You understand? Now, um, I think that should be that. Those are personal details, of course. Uh, those are personal details. This is to manage your contact. This is connected experiences, of course. Profiles that you're sharing with, logging in with accounts, all of this, right? So need to verify payments, add preferences, information and permissions. All of these are just um so much of um, them. But the major thing I wanted you guys to see is that password and security. So you want to be able to set it to password authentication on your device to avoid um, um, security breaches on your account because the rate at which people are breaching people's account now is quite alarming, right? And you want to be able to avoid that on your account. Is this clear? Any question? Um. Yes. Uh, thank you. Please. That connected experience. What is it all about? Connected experiences. That is where, um, let's look at it now. Sharing across profiles, right? You can see connected accounts. That like, means the accounts you are sharing your profile with. That means, of course, there are going to be meta business accounts, uh, meta uh, accounts. You can see the accounts I'm sharing across this profile. I have my Facebook, I have my Instagram, and I have my other Instagram accounts, right? So you can see if you look at it, you can see this is my Instagram account is connected to share from and share to. This is they are both connected together. Right, so I I said some of these things automatically. If I share, if I share, um, if I post an Instagram story, right, it automatically shares to my Facebook stories. If I also make an Instagram post, it automatically shares to my Facebook post. I can also turn that off if I want to, right? So you you can see here where we can share to, right? So this is my Facebook account because it's connected because I'm connected. I I connect it to my Instagram. Right. If I want to change it to any of these pages, I can decide to swap it to any of these pages. So it means anytime I post something on this Instagram account, it is going to share to that page, right? They will ask for a password. I don't want that. So this is where it is. So that's what the connected experiences are. Where you can share with accounts. Then logging in with accounts means um, choose which accounts can log into other accounts. This is very advanced, right? So usually, you know, if you log into your um your one account you, you're logging into one but from here you can log into different accounts which accounts can i put one log into do you see so i can log into this account and then this one will be connected to it right and that's what that particular one is right you can see this is my facebook now if i log into my facebook I, it automatically links and logs me into my instagram right you can see this other one too. And you can see, you can log into all accounts, this Instagram, right? Allow all accounts to log into each other, simple. Which means, if I tap on this, it means all accounts can be able to log into each other. They will ask for your password to ensure that that is possible. So that is maybe when you want to have your accounts logging in with, with logging in with accounts, you want to be able to log in to your device with any of your accounts, right? So you can access all of them. Then, of course, sharing across profiles, which is sharing stuff, 
If you post on Instagram, it can post on Facebook. If you post on um, Facebook, you can also automatically post on Instagram. You can also do that in the app itself without going through the settings. Um, is that clear? All right. Uh, so everybody understands this now, right? Is there anywhere that anybody does not understand? The major thing is password and security. See, so many accounts have been hacked. So it, it would, I would do you a very hard this people if I do not show you how to set up extra layer of security on your account, right? People are hacking people's account now. So you want that extra layer of security. Is this is this okay? Fine. Yes, sir. Let's yes, sir. let's check WhatsApp. Come on, some people, so many people's WhatsApp accounts are also being hampered with now. Now this is WhatsApp. You can see my WhatsApp screen, can you? No, we can't see. All right, hold on. Although WhatsApp is supposed to be my phone, I don't know if I can do it with my system, but just connect. Just hold on. Please. No, the WhatsApp, I'll just tell you how to do it. Um, it might not really work on this system because uh, we are setting things up. So for WhatsApp, right? Of course, then def definitely, most times your WhatsApp is with your phone. And you also want to be able to secure your WhatsApp with your phone, right? Um, so what you do is, on your WhatsApp, right, you go to um, settings on your WhatsApp right you go to settings on your whatsapp and from settings you go to account if you're with your phone you can just be following what i'm doing you go to account right and then on account on account you will see security notifications you will see two-step verification you will see change number, you will see recurrent account info. Just like we did for Facebook, you tap on two-step verification, right? They will ask you to put a PIN. Me, I already have, so I can tap on change PIN. Now, they, what they need is a six-digit PIN. Now, you have to put a six-digit PIN that you can remember. The essence of that is that because WhatsApp is a bit more different. WhatsApp is going to be sending you, you can be on your WhatsApp account doing something. The next thing, they will log you out. They will, they will, they will they will require you to put in that six-digit pin. So they are trying to do the security from time to time. If you see somebody that they, they hack their WhatsApp, most times know that that person does not have a two-factor authentication. So if you if if you set a two-factor authentication on your WhatsApp, right? From of course I said settings. From settings you go to account. From account they require you to put a six-digit pin. Put a six-digit pin you can remember. It's important that you can remember that pin. Use something you can easily remember now once you put the six digit pin right um once you put the six digit pin they will confirm it and what that means is from time to time whatsapp will be asking you for that six digit pin anytime you log into your device not all the time though but that in days maybe you can be using your device for three days four days you will not see it and then on the fifth day you will get a pop-up on your screen that you should put your 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 pin so you will not be required to put that two-factor authentication pin or two-step two step verification is what it's called on WhatsApp, right? So you want to be able to, to set that up so that your WhatsApp account can also be protected. Is that understand? I understood. I will speak rubbish. Yes, sir. It is. All right. Um, how many of us even have it on our accounts already? I, I had mine on my WhatsApp before now. Okay, but you don't have on Facebook. I do, sir. I have it on my WhatsApp, but I don't have on Facebook. Facebook. Uh, but you have seen how to do on Facebook now, right? Yes, yeah. sir. Good. Facebook. Precious, you're raising your hand. Um, you have a question. Precious. Yes, I do. Oh, yeah, okay. Good morning, ma'am. Hello, your voice is breaking. I can't hear you. What? Okay. Hello. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, I was saying thank you for the lecture so far. And okay. I'm asking, what happens when one loses or forgets their two-factor verification code? 
For instance, I have a friend that mistakenly deleted her Instagram app. And on downloading another one, she was asked for her two factor and she forgot about it. And up to date, she can't recover her account because when she types, um, when she clicks recover password, they ask her for her two factor verification code. Is, that is why it is very imperative that you put something you can remember. Because that sounds like an extra two layer of uh, um, protection for your account. So I think if you don't, if you can't remember it, that's why they will always ask you, they said, create a six-digit pin you can remember, right? So if you forget it, you just forget the account because they don't know who is trying to log in. So they believe that the owner of the account is the only person that knows the two-factor authentication code being the six-digit pin that is used for the account. So if you some anybody can try to log into your account and click on forgot password, if the person clicks on forget pa forgot password, right, without the two-factor authentication code, they can easily send an email. And if the person has access to your email as well, the person can access your account easily. But without the two-factor authentication, the person cannot access it. So it is always imperative that you put something you can remember. If you cannot remember it, then I think you should just forget about the account. It is going, to, it is gone. It's a goner. So it's imperative that even if you are, even if you have to write it down somewhere, maybe you know that you forget it. You go somewhere and write it down, right? Or use something very easy to understand, to remember. Yep. Uh, any other question? Any other person? Any other question? Hello, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please, sir, please, uh, the record for yesterday and today's slides, is, they are very, very important. Please, and I, I noticed that you've not been giving us the, because the repetition stretches memory. I have to listen, listen to it and again so that I'll be able to fiscalize it very well. So, okay. please, please, because uh, most of most of the time, I've, I've, as I'm listening to this lecture, I'm driving. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah, so I think it will be made available. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, okay, that should be that. Uh, <laughs> that should be that on that. Um, sorry. So let me just um. <clears throat> okay. So um. That's on that. Today, let's look at setting up a Meta Business account. Um, this is Facebook. I'm done with this. I'm sure everybody wants to see the um, back. First part, there we see account. Let's start it. Okay. Um, so. Now, we have the Meta Business account. If you want to run an ad, right? You want to run an ad for your business. You want to run an ad for, um, for your business for anything, right? You want to have a meta business account, and that meta business account is there to um help you run ads. It's going to have like a business account, which you can have your Facebook pages and of course your Instagram pages there, and you also have an ad account there. And of course, the ad account, you want it to be a prepaid ad account. I already have a lot, so I don't know how, but I'm just going to show you guys, walk you guys through how you can set that up really quickly. So if you do not have, I will first of all log in with an incognito tab. For those that do not have, you might have to want to also check it out. Um, so I already have that here, but let me just log into an incognito tab. And... Um, New incognito window. Um, let me share my screen. So, um, this is an incognito window, right? And of course, this was just formerly called um Facebook business account, right? But now it's now Meta. So you want to type uh. Of course, it's business, right? So you type business.facebook.com. Business.facebook.com. If you don't have an account yet, you hit on it, right? Now, you can see what it, it opens up. 
You can see what it opens up here, right? And here it says, just give me a minute. Um, just hold on. Let me take care of something. One minute.
Okay, um, sorry. Um, I, um, I needed to uh, pick up something very, 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 very quick. I, um, sorry about um, long pause. Uh, please forgive me, people. Uh, these people are trying to give me some headache here. So I had to go and try to take care of it. Uh, is that okay? Are we here now? I think I took permission to my left shot. Oh, please, am I forgiving? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, so, um, if you want to log into, of course, your business account, um, you, I said it, um, hit business on Facebook.com. It's always better to do some laptop or some laptop better, right? So, now when you log into business on Facebook.com, um, Facebook is going to require you to log in with your Facebook account. There's a reason. They want to be sure that, of course, they want to be sure of authenticity, that if somebody that owns the business account, a Facebook account with them that is trying to use this, right? So, of course, you want to have a business, you want to log into a Facebook business account. They want to be sure that you are the owner of it, right? They want to be sure that you are the one. So they want you to log in with your Facebook account. So you, you simply click on login with Facebook, and of course, definitely the login window is going to come out. You put in your email address or your phone number, and then you put in your password, and then you hit on login, right? And it's going to log you straight into the account. Uh, I already have one. But I just want to see. Yeah, so you see that thing. You see, so can you guys now see the factor authentication? You see, your account has two factor authentication. I'm trying to log into this place now, and it's an incognito window, so they don't recognize it. And you can see your account has a two factor authentication switched on, which requires this extra login step. Approved from another device. We sent a notification to your Oppo A78 and Samsung Galaxy A38 because these are the two, two phones that my account is currently logged in. And if I'm to check my Oppo phone now, if I'm to check my phone, uh, let me see if they, if they sent it to this phone or they sent it to only the, uh, because this phone is, is, I just started using this device. Right, so you can see that, you see how, so it means approved from another device, which means I, think I can simply tap yes on any of these devices, or I will ask for a six-digit code that will be sent to my, Full number, right? And via SMS. And that one, most times, they will send it because, of course, they accept that um, if I tap on didn't receive a code, they will begin to send a code now, right? So uh, I already have that extra layer of protection on my device. So let me check for my device. So, um, I'm looking at my device now to ensure that I have the notification. But I can't find it now. Is there a way to confirm that it's you? I'm trying to see. Usually, the notification will just come in. So, let me scroll through my notifications to be sure that. I can find it. Right. Yeah. <laughs>
so I would put my foot down here and and of course and then and see the engine is trying to log in Hello, you are not hearing you. Hello, the, ne the network is cracking, please. It's, it's, not, it's not cracking again. We can't even hear anything. So I think it's, it's one or two things in the features. Uh, application uh, gadgets. Sorry, I got locked out again. I'm back. Um, this is so, so tiring, man. I'm back to sharing my screen. And... So, yeah, after... So after I've turned it on my on my device and um, talking, and then yeah, if I want to save it, I'll just tap on continue and um let that go. And once it goes, this particular part screen should be off now, right? Um I don't know if this is the network that is making this thing so slow. Is the network obviously? Maybe you back it and start up the process again. Yeah, I think I think so. Uh, so it's loading up, anyways. It's loading from air, so it's going to open up. Yeah. So you see, I didn't click any other window. Yeah, I just approved it from my own device because it's two-factor authentication, right? And I just approved it from my device and you can just pull up my business account, right? So you can see, now this is, I already have one. Normally, if you do not have this account before, this is the first time, um, they are going to require you to create a business account. Like after you try to log in with your Facebook account, you will not create a business account. You just follow the simple information that are there. No much things, right? You just do it. And they might um, they might um, restrict you after you do it, just so you know, heads up. It's not everybody that might get restricted. You might be restricted. You might not be restricted. If you're restricted, you just... Um, 
um, tried to send them a message and they'll ask for identity, identity verification. You verify your identity with your ID card and um, cause NIN or whatever, and they will op open it up for you. <laughs> Excuse me, right? So this is, this is his account now. So you can see that page that I have, right? You can see the page. This is the Facebook page, right? You can see, of course, if you have not, uh, if you don't have any, if it is, if it's your first time of setting this up, you will definitely not see um any of these things, right? This might be very blank, but I, I, I mean, definitely, if you have set up, you should. If you have a page, the first thing that you're going to see is your page. As you can see now, this is my page. This is a Facebook. This is a test page. And this is an Instagram account for, if, of course, the page is not connected to an Instagram account here. That's why you see that this is empty. If I open a page, of course, all your pages that are connected to your Facebook account will it definitely appear here. Now, this page is not connected to an Instagram account. If I open a page that's connected to Instagram account, you're going to see what is going to appear. So you can see this is a Facebook page, right? And this is a, an Instagram account that is connected. You can see how this, they stay hand in hand with each other because they are both connected. I hope you guys can see this, right? Um, you can see all your, you can get all your pages from here. Uh, of course, I have this business assets here, this business accounts being hybrid. And of course, these are pages that I have under this business account. I can add any page I want. I'm going to show you guys that really quickly. Um, so this is another business asset. So you want to create all these business accounts. I already have more than I can create on one um, Facebook account, so I cannot do more. But you want to see, so this is like this, this account is connected to a Facebook page. If I tap on this other one, um, you can see this is a page, right? This is a Facebook page. And you can see this is the Instagram account that's connected to it. They are not active on Facebook. They are more active on Instagram, but they can see how it looks, right? You can see... Um, how it, the window is going to look like if it's connected. You can see others. I can show you more and more and more. You can see this one. Um, you can see this. You can see this, right? Um, so you can see uh, this, the two are connected, but I'm only, I only have access to their Facebook page. I don't have access on their, to their Instagram. So the person gave me access to Facebook page because he wanted to run an ad on Facebook. So, so that was last year, early last year. And you can see here, uh, to get the most out of all features, people who manage the Kalos Digital Facebook page also need the access to manage things on their Kalos Instagram accounts. I mean, then when he gave me access, I wasn't, he didn't link the account to Facebook, but now he has linked it to Facebook, Instagram, brother. So you see that they want me to manage. So I, if, if I want to manage this now, I have to ask him for Instagram, Instagram password. If I just click on confirm, it's going to take me to Instagram window and I will ask him for his Instagram password and then have access to his Instagram. You can see here yeah, from just we've been available to you confirm that people who manage your Facebook page can also manage your Instagram account. But yeah, you can see what it looks like, right? You can see um what this window looks like. It's that really simple. So from this business account, you can manage your contents, right? If you have a content calendar already, you can see notifications from here. Um, let me go to a page that already has notified guys. So you, you can see, I tapped on notifications, right? You can see your notifications here. You can see his Instagram notifications. You can see his Facebook notifications all in one window because these accounts have now been connected, right? So you can see notifications. You can see Instagram. You can see Facebook. They are all connected, right? So you can see your notifications. They are saying high priority. Um, you can see the messages from here, inbox. If I click on inbox, um, you can see messages in your inbox. It's going to take you to, it's going to redirect you to another um, window. So you can see, you see all messages, right? You see messenger being the normal message where you can receive uh, uh, messages from. There you can see Instagram, right? So you can see the messages, right? We want to get away from here, back to home. Um, so you can use this place to manage your meta business assets. 
right? Now, this is content. This is where you want to see your posts that you have been posting, right? You can see the stuff you have been posting here. You can see his posts. Instagram, Instagram, Facebook, Instagram, Instagram, Facebook. You can see, you can see them. You can see all the posts, right? Post and reels, stories, it's like bit text, feed and read, mentions and tags. You can see all of these things, right? Facebook photos, playlist. All of these are available here. You can then plan your content here. I mean, we have external, um, of course, we have um, comments, um, uh, management, um, what do they call them now? Um, um, tools that you can use to manage your, your accounts across board. Maybe you have Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you want to manage, manage them on one platform. There are various tools you can do that, like Bufa. Jesus. You can you can connect to your Facebook, Facebook October 12, 10 a.m. Instagram October 12, 10 a.m. Right? You can change the time you want. Say we don't want this time, right? You can do it from here. We can decide to leave it first and then go back to creating the content. And of course, add photo, add image, post for Facebook and Instagram, right? Customize post for Facebook and Instagram. If you continue, if you tap on this, you're gonna see that you are gonna see Facebook and you're gonna see Instagram. That is if you don't want to post the same thing to the same place. So if you want to post on the same place, you just turn this off. If you want to post the same thing. So what's, what that means is what you post on your Facebook page, you appear on your Instagram. So if I type something, um, this is this is a text is right. So now this is how it's going to appear on Facebook. And this is how it's going to appear on Instagram. Now this is how it's going to appear on the mobile. Let's select a picture. Let's add a photo, right? Let's upload from desktop. Let me say I want to add a photo. Um, let's say I want to add this photo. Uh, add this photo. Uh, let's see what it's going to look like. So it's, 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 it's uploading the photo. Yeah, so you can see this is how photos will be auto cropped because, of course, the photo size does not suit in with the alignment of Facebook, right? Um, so let's change this photo. So you click on delete, that photo will go off. And I come here, I upload it from desktop, I'm looking for another photo that will suit in well with Facebook. Um, let's go to downloads. I think I have some photos there. I uh, come down here and maybe these are my designs. I designed a few things. Uh, let's I select this one and uh, of course this one. Let's see what this looks like here. And it's going to be up in the media. Let's see what comes up. Yeah, so you can see this fits in very well, right? This is the design I made recently. So you can see this, right? And of course, you say this is a test page setup. You can see how it's going to appear. That's how it's going to appear. And this is preview for um system. Let's preview for how it's going to appear on a smartphone. Uh, let's see how it's going to appear on a smartphone. That's the preview, right? On this right hand side. Um, let's see how it's going to load up and appear. Of course, the PD text would be definitely be more than this, right? And then you also have maybe your call to action you want them to take. And let's see. So you can see how it's going to appear on a smart on a mobile phone. Are you seeing this preview? Yeah, so that's it. So if I want to change, I don't want to post the same thing for Facebook and Instagram, the same post. So I see customize for Instagram, right? I'll choose Instagram here. Yeah? And if I choose Instagram, you can see that I can change for Instagram. I can decide to change the text for Instagram. Uh, see, maybe I want to write something else. I want to say um, this problem will end tomorrow, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Okay. 
you know so you can see the text is now different for instagram and the text of facebook is now also different right and this is instagram that's facebook and maybe i want to also change photo i don't know if i can change photo or single um, instagram post can't exceed 10 photos share photos or videos right so let's say i want to uh, upload from desktop um i want to add another photo let's say for instagram and uh, uh let's say i add this let's say i add this one right So you can see this is for Instagram now. It's going to be a slide photo. I don't know if it's going to be the same thing for Facebook. Let's see. So of course, the picture, the picture is going to be the same. So that probably it's just the text that you can um, change up, right? Um, post to. You can decide to post to one platform, right? You can see here, you can turn off which platform you want to post to, right? So if I turn off Instagram, you can see Instagram is going to go off. If I turn it on back, you can see Instagram is going to come on. So you can just use this place to be able to Simply schedule your content. And of course, these are business, better business assets. So of course, you can be able to schedule. If I click schedule now, it's going to schedule at like these two times that I've already set here. If I change the time, maybe I want Instagram to come up on the October 13th. I don't want it to be the same day with, with Facebook. I can decide to change it to, okay, Instagram, the next day, October 13th. Same post, but next day, um, 11 a.m. I choose 11 a.m., right? This one, 10 a.m. So this will go out on October 12th for Facebook. And then for Instagram, it's going to come up on um, October 13th by 11 a.m. So you just click on schedule and immediately it's going to schedule your content for you, right? Uh, let's delete all of this. So do we understand this part? Is it easy to understand? Yes, Does it make I sense? Understand. Okay. All right. So that's it. That's on that. Um... So this is content as planner. This is ads. If you want to run simple ads, this is insights. So let's click on insights, right? Um, insights is where you can see the um, overview of your page, right? You want to have an understanding of what your page looks like and what your page has been doing. This page has been inactive for a very long while, but you can see the page activity. So you can see your last week in review. Take a moment to review activity and insights for a quick clip from September 30th to October 6th, right? And of course, that's six days. You can see I published zero pieces of content, which means no, there has been no post on any any of the platforms. Um, your results, two to three last week, Facebook reach. You can see that there's no result, but you can use this place to look at your results. You can see Facebook reach, Instagram reach, paid reach, right? You can see your reach. You can see your audience size. Um, you can see how many people that like the Facebook page, about 301 people. The page has 317 followers. Instagram followers are just 94. Uh, of course, you can see these insights from here. You can see um, how your page, was, how your post were doing. You can see the reach. This is for Facebook. Of course, you can see all of these insights from this place, right? You can see audience results. Let's say results. That's an overview. You can see Instagram reach and you can see, uh, you can see Facebook, Instagram, Facebook page and Instagram reach, right? So you can see profile page and profile visits for Facebook 51, for Instagram just 14. Of course, that page has been inactive. By the time it becomes active again, I'm sure that that's going to increase. New likes and follows on Facebook, you can see three. And for Instagram, nothing, right? Um, you can see page reach. This is for ads, right? 5,266, 7,079 impressions. What impressions means the number of times people viewed your post. Impressions is Reach is how many people the thing got to, how many accounts the thing got to, your post got to. Then impression is how many people looked, how many times did the people view that post, right? So you want to have a look at all of this stuff. Um, yeah, so this is where you can see your content, your videos, all of this stuff, right? All of these other good stuffs are ah, here, yeah, right? Now you click on all tools. This is all tools. Everything you have, everything you want to check out is on this left hand side of your screen. Now, if you look at all tools, you can see here we have so many things, content, the same thing that you, most of the things you have here are also here. List center, live dashboard planner, ads, page settings, settings, store locations, view page, blah, 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 page set. You can set your page from here, right? You can manage your pages. That same thing you were doing on Facebook that I showed you, right? So you can manage all of them from here. 
um, let's see. So if we look at this now, if we tap on page settings here, you can to take you back to to the page where you can be able to manage your page settings, right? So you can do that from here as well. And um, close this up. So yeah, you can see all of this good stuff, right? Uh, this is where you want to set up billings and payments. Now, billings and payments is when you want to run your ad, how you want to pay for your ads, right? I want to pay for your ads. Um, let's click on that first. So if you go to billings and payments, let's load billings and payments, and let's see. So. So you can see this is the ad account that has been disabled. This ad account was disabled because I, I didn't pay attention to it and I lost that ad account, right? But this is where you can set up your billings and payment. Um, that's not actually even what I want us to look at now, but it's quite simple. So we have different ad accounts here. So let me use this ad account and show you how to set up billings and payments. Um, you want to ensure that, um, of course, you should have an ad account first before you can be able to set up billings and payments for the, that particular ad account. You can see that this is a prepaid ad account. Um, you can see ad account here. Uh, this is a prepaid ad account. You can see payment method and payment activities. So this is where you set up your payment method for any particular ad account. So that's not what I want us to look at now. Uh, if you click from here, it's all tools. Um, let's look at... Uh, Ad account settings. Right. Uh, let's see. account controls you can see audience right you can see all these set check out account overview Yeah, so oh this is not what I want to do. I told you before this is not this. Let's go back to all tools. Um well let's go to business settings and let's see. Yeah, so this is business settings, right? Um you can see. So this is business settings, right? You can see people, you can see partners, system users. Now this is users, people that will be able to access this your business account. This is my this business account hybrid, right? I can set up people that can access this account with me. Now you can see that I'm the one that have full control of this account and I'm active and the account is active. Now you can add people. If you click on add people, uh, of course, you can you'll be required to put in their email address. You ask people to join your business by entering their email address. So people can join your business and enter this email address, right? So if I add a, an email address, uh, I can add anybody that I want to add. So let's say I want to do this. I don't know. Okay, let's say I want to add this other account. I don't know if it's... Okay, let's say this is it, right? And of course, you're going to see next. You can add more than one person. 
Uh, if I click on next, hold on, guys. Uh, let me pick up. This. Yeah, so um, this is where you invite people, right? So you can see um, I, I, I put in an email account and of course you can give them access to manage your business account with you. Um, you can see yeah, business account rules are changing to make it more clear well, as they, they, have, uh, they have actually changed their whole UI, right? Their interface. This was not, this would, this would not appear before. You can now see that to make it people with partial access to the business account can work on blah, 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 blah. So this is like Giving people partial access to the account. Basic assets. This was formerly called employee rule. It's now the default assets that everyone gets when they are added to the business account, right? So before they called this employee rule, uh, but now it has been changed to basic assets. And of course, they have partial assets as well. Um, so if you look at this, these are the things that have changed on the account. The role names are changing, but the assets people have will stay the same. So they changed the role names from employee rule and all of those things to now basic assets and all. So it shouldn't be confusing. So you can see partial assets. This is the default. So this is basic assets, basic employee role. So it means these people will control uh, everyone else with this account gets basic assets, which means they can work on pages, Instagram accounts, or other business assets that are going to be assigned to them, right? And of course, you now see full control. This is the most control you can give someone. They can do all of the above, assign other people full control and delete the business account, right? And of course, you might not want to do that. Um, this is, of course, what you don't want to, maybe you don't want to do that. So this is default. So maybe you want to leave that at that. Um, this is apps and integrations. Um, this is none, leave that. Um, so you see, to help your business account secure, we recommend you limit the number of people who, are, who can control your business, right? So you can see here, I, I kept them on basic access. So it means that on this basic, I have to grant them access to what I want them to, to do. So, which is most likely like the same thing you saw on your Facebook page. So you can grant them access to whatever you want. We showed, we've showed we worked on all of this yesterday. You can grant them access to the page you want them to manage. There are two pages on this business account, which is just these two. They are added to this particular business account, right? So you can grant them access to, uh, to any of this. And uh, of course, then of course, select what you want them to do. Um, all of these are not available. Add accounts, right? You can add, 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 grant them access to your ad account as well. So you can see this is the ad account here and every other thing. Instagram accounts, there are no Instagram accounts because all the pages here are not like the Instagram account. But you can see how this window looks like. Where you can assign tax to them. So if I assign it, I'll just send invite and this person is going to get an invitation. You can see partial access, um, what the person is going to have access to. Um, if I click on this, you can see it's going to own all of these things automatically, right? If I don't want the person to have partial access, I have to tick the task I want the person to, to handle. And then if I want the person to have full control, if I tick on this, then the person is going to have full control of everything on my business, right? And of course, aside from revenue. Um, so you, you want to like check if you want to allow somebody to have full access to everything. Of course, if it's like maybe you want to add maybe a... A, an ad running agency or an agency that can help you propagate your ads or run your business better you might want to give them uh partial access but of course the partial access you want to give them 
access to also your ad account, right? And of course, you click on that so that they can be able to run ad for you and all of the stuff. Uh, but that's um, that's by the way, uh, we'll tick all of this off and then we'll go back. Um, cancel all of this, right? So that's for people, right? You want to add people to be able to manage this um, business account with you, this which is this meta business account, which is this particular one. Like I said, when you log in with your Facebook account for the first time, you will be required to to um you'll be required to create a business account which you can just follow the steps and create now this is partners uh, virtually almost the same thing right you can see add partners partners to request access from partners to share access with um, partners to request access from add a new partner request assets work on their behalf all of these right these are like maybe you want to add partners and all those stuff system users all these other good stuff right now if you go to account Let's go to account. You see pages, right? And of course, this is under business settings. When you go to pages, you can see where we have the page. This is this page, right? And you can remove this page from this business account. You can remove this page from this business account. You can, you can see people that manage the page, right? You can add, if you say add now, you can add a page to this business account. Say you want to add another page to this business account, you can easily add a page to this business account from here, right? You can also request access to a page. The page is not your own. Um, you can request access to the page, right? Uh, your business needs to use this page on behalf of another business. For example, you work for an agency and you want to run ads for a client's page. The page will still belong to the original owner. They only grant you access. So you can request access to a page. Um, your business, this one add a page. Your business already owns this page, or you need to own it, for example. Now, this one is where you want to claim a new page, claim a page. And to claim a page, it means that you already have, um, you're the owner of the page, right? So you just tap on this, and you will ask you for the page name. Um, Let's say that's Echo Creep. You see that if you type the name, as far as the page is available, it's going to come up. And then you see add page, right? Now, if, if I click on add page to claim this page, right? I've not claimed it to this account yet because it's already existing. It's already an already existing page and it is your own. You want to add it to this business account. I add claim page. Once I click on add page, it's going to um, require me to um, grant access to this page, right? Um, so sorry, just give me a, a second. Okay, so um, ah, where was I? <laughs> so yeah, you can add a page, you can claim the page, right? So if I say, I wanna claim this page, of course, definitely you have to be the owner of the page so that when they send a notification, you can agree that the page is yours. And of course, immediately you grant that access, the page is automatically going to be added to this business account, just like this other two that are here, right? So you can claim a page, you can request access to a page, maybe the page is not your own, it's somebody's page. You want to request access to the page, you can request access. You want to create a new page, you can create a new page from here, right? Instead of going through Facebook as well, you can create a new page from here for your business. You can see how to create a page from here. Quite simple as game, look at business or place, you create your page directly from there. You choose the, the category, say look at business. You can see, choose your page name, choose a category for your page. Um, address, zt, zip code, create your page. You can create
Let's walk. Where does it show me Shege today? Yeah, so... Now you can see what the network did. We're having trouble completing your request. So that was because of the network. So let me reload this. All right, so then, um, so yeah, you can see here, um, you can add people to help you manage this page, right? So if I click on add people, um, you can see, of course, you can grant somebody access to manage this page with you, right? um yeah just like you have you can give them control to what you want to give them control to right uh whatever you want them to have control over that's what they're going to have control of on your page right so you can see where you can grant people access to manage your page with you from here as well just as you can do it from Facebook too, right? Uh, of course, yeah, that's it on that, right? Um, these ad accounts. Now, this is where you want to add an ad account to this particular uh, business, right? Business account. So you need to have an ad account. The ad account is where you can run your ads from, right? The ad account is where you can run your ads from. The ad account is where you can um load your cash to be able to run your ads i mean you can run ad directly from instagram if you're doing on instagram but if you're doing for facebook you need to have an ad account so for instagram you can just run your ad directly right from instagram but i think it's after the first or second time i think they give about three times that you need to have an ad account which is necessary right if you want to be serious with your business you need this so these ad accounts right are this an, already an ad account i have here on these accounts right and of course, you can add add account. I don't think it will give you to add add account. So you can see, uh, because I already have one. You can only have one to a particular business asset. I think so. But I can request access to another ad account. Maybe um another business. I want to use their ad account on their behalf um, for another business. Maybe I want to run ads for them and I need access to their ad account. Right? I can request access. But to add another account is simple. You just click. Um, of course, that is if you already have an ad account that you want to claim. For now, I think because the, what did they say? I have reached the maximum number of ad accounts allowed for a new business account, right? So this is a new business account. You will be able to add more ad accounts after several weeks of filling our policies. Yeah, so this, ad, this business account is new. So I cannot add any ad account to it because it's a new business account. I created it sometime earlier and I just added an ad account to it recently. And the ad account, of course, is just one. So ad account, ad account is very simple. Definitely, of course, if you don't have anyone, you can create a new ad account by tapping on create. And when you tap on create ad account, you ask you for the ad account name, you select the ad account name, what you want to name the name of the ad account, and then you make it a prepaid ad account, right? Um, of course, when you're making it a prepaid ad account, let me show you how to make it prepaid so you don't make it postpaid. Now, of course, we know what is meaning of prepaid and postpaid, right? Um, prepaid means that you're going to pay um, beforehand if you want to run your ads. But postpaid means that you will, you are going to run the ads and then they'll be charging you from your bank account. Now, postpaid is dangerous to use because postpaid means postpaid works in such a way that you can decide that okay, I want to run my ad with ten thousand naira. You set ten thousand naira. And then, because it is a postpaid, they run the ad. They run the ad, and in the end, the ad they run it more than ten thousand. Right? You end up spending more than ten thousand naira for that ad. And if you don't have up to ten thousand naira in that account, you start owing them. But for prepaid, you only put the funds you want to use to run the ad. So if it's ten thousand you want to use to run the ad, you upload ten thousand to your ad account, 
And once the 10,000 naira finishes, the ad will stop running. So that is for that, right? You can see our Instagram account, WhatsApp account, where you can add all of those stuff here. Um, integrations, integrities, other platforms, registrations, all this other stuff, you can check them out later, right? Um, of course, for that ad um, billings, right? For that prepared ad account to make it prepared, let me just show us really quickly. Now, of course, it's from billings and payments, but definitely if you're creating your ad account, it might pop up while trying to create the ad account where you have to select what method you want to use to be able to um, be charged for your ads. Uh, loading, loading. Yeah, you can see that this ad account is prepaid. Did you see? So you can see prepaid funds, right? So you want your ad account to be prepaid, right? So um, if you want to make it a prepaid ad account, definitely it's a very simple step. The same step that you're going to use when you want to load your card. So if we if we have like something like ad funds, definitely you're going to see when you're selecting your ad, when you want to create the ad account, right? Uh, when creating the ad account and they give you the opportunity for billings and payments, please ensure you select the right country. When you're creating the ad account, which as of course I cannot do it here because I already have ad accounts already existing on this. It's a very simple process. You create, you create new ad accounts. They will ask you to choose the ad account name. You choose the ad account name. They'll ask you for the country, right? For billing. Choose Nigeria and choose Naira. It is very imperative. If you can choose another country, you can choose US. You have to go and look for a dollar card to be able to run your ad. Now you choose Nigeria and you choose Naira, right? And of course, after choosing Nigeria and Naira, that is where you want to set up the payment method. And when you want to set up a payment method, after choosing Nigeria, choosing Naira, they will show you a window that appears like this, right? Like this to add funds. You might not, you don't necessarily need to add the funds at that time. You just want to ensure that you're setting up your ad account to be prepaid. Now, normally or naturally, you will feel that this should be the, the best one because you have debit or credit card, you have Visa, you have MasterCard, right? But selecting this will make your ad account a prepaid, a postpaid rather ad account. You can see the default. The default is always 4,500 Naira. You can choose whatever you want to choose. Maybe I can decide to change this to 1,000. You choose a... You don't want to choose this because naturally your brain or anybody looking at this will feel, okay, this should be the first thing you should choose, right? But you want to choose... You don't want to choose that because that will make your other card for speed. So you want to go down to this place and choose... Naira payments with MasterCard slash Visa. So you select this part, right? And then you click on next. It's going to take you to the next window. And the next window should have something like, um, let it load up. Let it load up. I have to. Yeah, so the next window will show you something like this. Right, and of course, you can see click continue to complete an error payment to pay you. Right, so this is simply how to make it prepared. Right, if you click on continue, um, it's going to take you to the next window where you have a third party gateway system, which is this pay you for you to be able to um, add funds. Right, so you want to be able to add funds You're already here on card, master visa, you put your card number. Of course, this is the card, the card number. You put your card name, which is the card holder name, the account you want to use. You put your the month the card is going to expire. You put the year, it's written at the back. And by the time you put all of this information, they'll ask you for the point to put your CVV. Right? So you can see it's going to ask you for entering your CVV, right? Now you can see to enter your CVC account. To enter that the CVC is the CVC rather. The CVC is that three code at the back of your ATM card, right? So you add it. Code to the back of the ATM card, you put your name, put your um, um, months the card is expired, uh, the month the card is expiring, put the year, and then you click on confirm, right? So you don't need to click on confirm or pay, 
that it wants to just take through this window, this particular place now, this process that it has taken you through by clicking on pay you with master, so visa card, right? What that does is, what this does is, if I load this account now, if I put all this information and I put pay, right? They are going to deduct the money from my card and fund it to my ad account. Do you understand? So what that means is, it is from the ad account, the money that is on the ad account that they will charge it, not from, um, not from maybe after the ad has finished running, they will not start billing me, no. It will now be any money that is in the ad account, that is what they would use to bill. Do you understand? So you want to follow this process and use this step so that you don't get set up your ad account to be postpaid and they start billing you unnecessarily. I remember one of my friends, ad account was a postpaid account. He was using my ATM card to run ads, man. This boy nearly wrecked my life. Because ad account was postpaid, he would put to ad run ad for 5,000. They would end up charging me more than 5,000. They sometimes end up charging up to 15,000 because they'll be debiting the money after the ad has finished running. They'll be debiting you. They'll debit the first time. They'll debit the second time. They'll debit the third time. Like, they just kept debiting my account. So you don't want that, right? <laughs> so you need to be sure that you set this up to be prepared at the start from these billings and payments. You can see where you can do that, right? So you want to make sure that it is um, payments with pay you so that you can be able to pay for your ads. That's it. Um, yeah, so that is on that, right? Uh, we'll cancel this. And if you want to run an ad, which is like what um, most of us would like to know, um, of course, let's go back to the home page, being Meta Business Suite, and um, we come back here. Let's take, let me take you home. These all tools, right? You see, click on that all tools, and from the all tools, it's gonna take you down to this point. If you want to run a quick ad, you can quickly tap on ads, right? But I prefer not to do that. I prefer you go to ads manager. It might be a bit complex, but it's not that complex. It's quite simple. Now, let's say we want to run a quick ad. We click on ads manager after the all tools. Hope you guys are understanding. Well, let me pause first. Do you understand? Any question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is there a question? Following. Okay, we are following. Okay. I wanted to okay. ask. Ask, please. Yeah. Is this... Um... Okay, can you also run ads with the the Facebook, the normal Facebook, not not this business Facebook? Yes, you can. You okay. can. Okay, I was just wondering there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you Thank can. You. But the best way to scroll up pathway, or you can. Now, so I'm back to this, right? Um. You see why I click, you see why I click like ads manager, and it's going to open up this place for you, right? You can see this is an, an ad I ran recently. I've deleted most of the ads I ran on this on, 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 on this ad account, right? And this is my other ad account, even the main ad account I want to show you guys. But yeah, this is it, right? Say so you want to run a quick ad, this is still loading, still loading. It's taking time to load. Yeah, I guess it has. Okay, so yeah, this is it, right? So you want to be able to maybe run a new ad account. Right, you click on create. You want to be able to run the ad, right? You want to create an ad. Now they are going to ask you to choose the objective, the campaign objective, because you want to set up an ad campaign. So you are going to be asked to set up a campaign objective. Um, you can see here awareness, traffic, engagement, leads, app promotion, sales. So you can see awareness, traffic, 
engagement, leads, app promotion, sales, right? All of this good stuff. So you can see all what you can run with the ads. This is first. So you can see yeah, awareness, right? Hello. You can see show your ads to people who are most likely to remember them. See Hello. the awareness ad looks like, right? The network is cracked. Awareness between store location awareness. You're able to click on your link. Hello. Can you guys hear me? Uh, yes, the network was cracking soon after I started. Showing the yes, 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 and, of course, of course, of Hello. Hello. The network is not friendly. So yeah, 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 yeah. Um, let's just rush through this, right? We are running out of time. So this is you want to run an ad. Um, of course, I should I said when you click on campaign, you click on create, and create is gonna show you this place. You now they are gonna ask you to choose a campaign objective. You can see here uh, awareness. You can see traffic, traffic. If you want to, maybe um, you want link clicks, you want people to go to your landing page, you want people to send to hit your messenger, Instagram, WhatsApp, you want people to give you a call, you want people to go to uh, your Instagram profile, right? You want people to take all of this action, you want to drive traffic to somewhere. This is it. Engagement, you want people to engage your post. Get more messages, purchases through messaging, video views, post engagement, page likes, or event re uh, responses. So you can see where the ad is good for Messenger, Instagram, and WhatsApp, video views. You want people to view your videos, maybe your YouTube videos. You want people to engage. You, like, you have a video, you want people to engage, right? They want to you want to show your ad to engage on the video. You want people to engage on the post that you have made. You want conversions to take place. You want calls. This is leads, right? You want to get information, people's information. You have app promotion. You want to promote an app. You have app installs, you have app events, you have sales. You want to make sales, right? Uh, you can see conversions, catalog sales, messenger, blah, 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 blah. Now, let's say we want to do awareness, right? Let's say we want to just run an awareness ad. Or should we say we want to run? Let's say we want to run ad for sales. Let's say we want to run ad for sales. Can you guys hear me clearly, please? Confirm. Just type. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, 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 yes. yes. Can you hear right. me? So let's say we want to run an ad for sales. Um, uh, we now click on continue. Let we have clicked on sales, right? We click on continue. And it's going to create the campaign for us. So let's see what is going to come up, right? Now, good. Now you see here, you can see here it's saying advantage plus shopping campaign. Um, what this means, what this place is telling us is that maximize performance and find new customers. Preset settings include automatic placement, lowest cost B strategy, and more, right? Now, this is saying this sort of setup is based on your ad account information activity, maybe based on things like retail, MetaPixel. So, this is saying the advantage plus means, or plus shopping campaign means, allow Facebook to set up the ad for you, right? <laughs> so, they want to set up the, this is them setting it for you. They will place it automatically, like they are going to put automatic placement, meaning, um, it will place it where they feel, uh, where the algorithm thinks that you will likely get more sales. So they can place it on Messenger, you'll place your ad on Messenger, 
on Instagram, on Facebook, on everywhere. And you might not want that, right? So most times I prefer you go for manual sales campaign, right? You set up a sales campaign from the scratch. So that's what we want to do. Let's, let's show you how to set up a campaign from the scratch. Now we we'll click on manual sales campaign and then we'll click on continue. Yeah, so it's going to open up this, right? So you can change the campaign name. Uh, I don't know what to call this now. Let's just call this bubble uh, sales. Um, Let's just call this bubble sales campaign. And of course, you see a special ad categories. These special ad categories mean if you're running an ad for real estate listings, if you're running an ad for employment, you're running an ad for social issues elections, you want to tick any of this, right? The reason is you want to let Facebook know that this is the category I'm running my ad so that they don't flag your ad account because the algorithm is very crazy. They, you see so many things people post on Facebook or on Instagram normally. They don't flag it, right? People post certain content, they don't flag it, they don't have it. They just leave you, not even sign them. But once you want to run an ad and you do that kind of thing, bam, your ad account will go down immediately. So you want to select that um, ad category. You want to declare that ad category. If, if an ad falls on any of those categories, employment, maybe you want to run an ad for jobs, internship, official certifications, any of these things, housing, social issues, elections or politics, credit. You want to declare that your ad falls in this category, right? So that they don't see you as trying to maneuver their system. And then they, they restrict your ad account. If you restrict your ad account, it's very difficult to get it back. So you see auction. This one is always automatic. Um, so it's already there. It's the default. You can't change it. Um, you can see sales campaign, which is the campaign objective we selected. If we want to change it, you can change it from here. We have already a selected sales campaign, so let us leave it. So we already selected sales campaign, right? So we leave that as sales campaign. And of course, you see a use catalog. We don't have that. Create is through B-test. That is if you want to... Um, Sorry, give me a Okay, so this is if you want to create an A slash B test. All right, sorry. Um, so you have your A through B testing. This is to test two ads again. Of course, definitely you want to. This you said this you can see what they wrote here to help improve ad performance. Test versions with different images, text audiences or placements for accuracy. So this one you want to test an ad against each other to know which one will run better, which one will give you better results. Um, you can test different images. You can test different texts. You can test different audiences, right? You can change your audience or your placement as where you place it. Where do you want the ad to show? That's what is placement, simply. Simply, that's where, where you want your ad to, where you want people to see your ad is the placement. Now, advantage campaign budget. This means that um, they will distribute your campaign across, your budget across ad sets. This, what this one means is that Facebook will uh, automatically um, distribute any amount that you 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 
you put for your ad across different assets. Of course, that is if you have different assets, right? So we'll turn that off. All right, let's turn that off. And then we don't want to use the advantage campaign budget. Uh, we want to set up an uh, amount we want to use to run the ad. If you tap on this now, you're going to see lifetime budgets. Now, daily budgets gives you give makes them give you some form of accountability. For instance, they are both virtually almost the same thing, but you can choose whenever you want. You want. For instance, we say we want to set our daily budget at one thousand five hundred per day. Let's just say we want to set one five per day, right? So let's allow that to load up. Let's see what they are going to show us. So let's see what they are going to tell us on for daily budgets. Yeah, so you see here that they said, just read what they read here. They said, you spend up to 1,875 naira on some days and less on others. You spend an average of 1,500 naira per day and no more than 10,500 naira per calendar week. What this means or what they're trying to tell you is that if your daily budget is 1,005, on some days, you will spend as much as 1,875 naira. Meaning the days that they seem to get better results for your ad, your ad reaches more people, the algorithm reaches more people, your algorithm shows it to more people with to get better results. You spend up to 1875 naira. And the days that you might not, they might not have so much good results, you spend less. But on an average, you'll be spending one five per day. And of course, for seven days, if you multiply um, 1005 plus times seven days, you have 10,500. So you're not going to spend more than 10,5 in a week. That is for daily budget. Now, if we choose lifetime budgets, right, it's going to shift the money up. So let's say we want to send a, a lifetime budget to 10,000 Naira. Now, let's see what they are going to tell us. It's verifying the edits. So you can see you won't spend more than 1,000 Naira during the lifetime of your campaign. The, the, your budget is too low. Your campaign budget must be at least 24,000 to account for all ad, ad, sets, ad, ad set budgets in this campaign. Yeah, that's what they are telling me. Don't mind them. <laughs> I have only one asset here, so why are they telling me more? Why are they telling me this? Okay, let's just assume that this is what they want, right? So we want to run the ad for more than one week. It's always advisable that you run your ad at least for 27 days. For seven days, rather. Okay, let's say we select 24,000 now. Or let's say we select that the nonsense amount that they are putting there. Let's say we we'll select 30k for 25,000. So, definitely, this can fly without them telling you this. I've, I've run an ad with less than this before, so I don't know what they are saying. So, you see that you won't spend more than 25,000 during the lifetime of your campaign. You spend more on days with more opportunities and less on days with fewer opportunities, right? What this means is that. What I'm trying to tell you is that on some days, they are not, this one now, they are not telling you how much they will spend on, an, on, on some days you get more results. Do you see the difference? They just told you you will spend more than 25000 during the lifetime of your campaign. You spend more on days with more opportunities and less on days with fewer opportunities. They do not tell you generally how much they will spend. Unlike when we chose daily budgets, right? Where we chose daily budgets and we see... Uh, let's see. Of course, if it's, you have told me, you have given me one name. All I want will choose only budget of 1,005, right? Where they now said, um, where they now told us how much, right? You see how they give some level of accountability here. So maybe you want to choose daily budget. So let's move forward from this, right? Now you see show more options, ask scheduling. You want to leave this one, run all the run the ads all the time because, of course, definitely people are going to be inclined to see your ad at any time. So we are done with this part, right? We we'll click on next. Now this is the asset. Now you want to choose the asset name. Um, they're showing you assets. You want to choose an asset name. D 
this is you can have more than one ad set in one ad campaign, right? Which ad budget setting is better? Both of them are okay, right? But I think I would prefer you just choose daily budgets. Just choose daily budget. The both of them are okay, both of them work, but just choose daily budgets. Um so this is where you want to run the you can see you can see website, app, messaging apps, messaging. Let's choose uh messaging apps, right? So you can see some things are not clickable apart from websites. We don't have an app, we don't have a website and app that's connected. So let's choose messaging apps. We want people to message us on our, on our messenger, Instagram, and WhatsApp, right? And of course, we have this. We have fashion events. Let's do this. Set up the fashion events. Now, you, you now want to come here to fashion events. Okay, let's set this. I just leave it at that, right? Like, okay. and let's come down here. And um, you see here, you have a page. You can now choose a page you want to use to run the ad. Of course, you have more than one page on this thing, on this particular ad set, right? You want to choose a page. So you can select the page, right? Now, this is this page that I have here. I can say, okay, I want to run it on this page. It's a good page. And I select the good page. It's going to automatically set that page up for me. Now we run the ad here. We can now see where I can run the ad to. So I can run the ad to the messenger. I can run the ad to Instagram. Now I can choose where I want the ad to be available for me to chat. You can see choose at least one destination where you are available to chat. You can select multiple apps to show to reach more people. So let's say we want to run the ad on Instagram. And of course, Messenger, right? You can decide to run only Instagram. Um, so these ones are, they are going to, you can see WhatsApp, the WhatsApp account is not connected, so we'll leave it. Um, you can now see schedule. You now want to choose the date you want the ad to run. Today is October 11th. You want the ad to start by what time? Say I'll choose 1 p.m. Because of course you need to choose a date that is other than what you have already selected. And I choose 1 p.m., right? And I set an end date when I want the ad to stop running. And let's say I want to select on the, uh, let's say Friday next week, or let's see when is the next week, 18th, right, at 12 p.m. Now you can see that uh, we've selected one direct ad to run at the page. And then you now come down here and you now have audience plus, uh, advantage plus audience. Advantage plus audience is they will use their technology to find your audience, right? Um, maybe you don't want that, right? So. You can now add suggest so add audience. Now you want to send tailor it down to the audience you want to use to run your ad, right? You choose the age to choose the ages. Of course, 18 is the minimum age, but you want to choose an age that is relevant to your business, right? Um, an age that um can actually um take action on your business. So maybe we want to choose from 20 to um let's say 20 to 50 years. For this ad, let's say we choose 20 to 50. Look here, you can see that the audience size is reducing, right? If you increase it, if I increase the age, let's say I increase it to 55. Look at what is there, 30,800, 30 million, 800 people to 36 million, 200 people. That's who the ad is going to reach, right? And then it's fairly broad, according to them. You can now see if I increase the age, you can see where it's going to reach to, right? If I reduce it, it's going to reduce as well. So let's say I reduce it to 50 years, or let's say I reduce it to 45 years. It's going to reduce the, the size. So you can see 29 million to 30 million, right? And then this is where you now want to choose your gender. Yeah, of course, you can leave this for both male and female. You can choose men, you can choose women, you can choose all. Depends on the kind of business you're doing. If you're selling maybe only female, feminine products, right? So, and only females are likely to patronize you, you want to choose female. If you're selling only male products, you want to choose male, right? So that your ad just gets to the proper people. But note that as you say to you select, it's going to reduce the audience size here. So if I select only men, if I select only men, you're seeing that the audience size has reduced from how many million it was to now 16 million because I've reduced the population of people I wanted to go. If I select only women, you can see the audience size now, right? 
So let's just select all. And of course, all is going to be wider. And then you want to now choose interest. This is where you want to tailor down your ad, right? You want to choose people that are going to be interested in your ad. I don't know what we're running an ad for. Well, let's say we're running for a beauty brand, a beauty brand. You want to now choose people that are going to be interested in buying from your beauty brand. So we'll choose interest like this, say beauty. And of course, we are going to choose people that are going to be interested in purchasing from a beauty brand. And you want to choose, say, beauty, health and beauty as the interest. And um, it's going to reduce your audience size because, of course, now you choose only one audience. You're going to have to choose more than one interest, right? So you might choose health and beauty. You can choose um, um, wellness, health and wellness or whatever. I don't know, health and wellness. But you want to be very, very uh, um, concise about the kind of um, people you are, you are selecting. Your, this is where this is the major place of the ad. Because this is what is going to determine if people are going to be interested in your ad or not. So you want to choose people that are going to really, really be interested in this app, in this ad that you want to run, right? So now I choose health and wellness, personal care. I choose, you can see that's all that all under interest. I choose, let's see, I want to choose um, fitness. So I have to do this really quick now because my time is up, almost up. So I choose physical fitness. And of course, this is now still under interest, a different interest altogether. You can see how it is also increasing my audience size. And I can choose, um, what do I choose again? Uh, I don't know. You want to choose things that um, spa, personal care, right? Um, see, it's because it's uh, is a um, beauty cosmetic product, so I choose spa, personal care, right? And of course, it's going to um, trim down the. Uh, now these are all interest, interest, interest. Now let's choose people that work within this particular um this thing, not interest anymore. Maybe um a job uh, description. Let's say we choose beauty. You can see job title, beauty therapist, right? Maybe I want to target beauty therapists. I want them to also see my ad. I can choose beauty therapist, right? And it's going to also push that out for me. And of course, you can see the audience size is about 12 million. So let's move on. Let's move on. So you can choose as much interest as you feel, right? You can see define for that. You can decide to choose more, <laughs> more interest, right? And of course, this is now advantage plus placement. Advantage plus placement means Meta will place your ad across multiple platforms where they feel that it is likely to perform best. You might leave this on. You might want to leave it on. I mean, if you're running for different platforms. But if you want to run for maybe only Instagram, you have to turn it off, right? You have to edit it and put it on manual placements. Let's say we'll choose manual placements. Of course, Advantage Plus is recommended. It's also for their own money. Right, but you want to choose manual plus placement, and you want to choose where you want your ad to display for people. So you can see here uh, Facebook feed, Facebook, Instagram feed, Facebook marketplace, Facebook video views, Facebook, Instagram explore. This is where they are going to show your ad, right? These are the places they are going to show your ad. Now you see apps and sites, audience network, native banner, and audience network rewarded videos, right? Now this is going to show on people's apps. Your ad is also going to show on people's ad apps and website. You know how. When you go to a website, you see an ad pop up, or you go to um a, an app, you see an ad pop up from Facebook. This is where the you can set it from. You can try to turn it off if you don't want that. Right. So let's say I want to turn this off. I don't want my ad to appear on apps and sites. I turn that off. And I come here. You can see Facebook search results. I want it to show here. I want it to show here. I want it to show Instagram stories, Facebook stories, Messenger stories. Maybe I don't want to show Messenger stories, I turn it off. And I want to show Instagram, this Facebook Reels. You can choose whatever you want to choose, where you want your ad to show, right? I've turned up listening to like this. And, uh, Instagram profile feed, right? Uh, what is that from, though? Messenger inbox. This will take your ad to people's Messenger inbox. I'm sure sometimes if you open your Messenger inbox, you see some ads, right? Do you want that? If you want that, leave it on. If you don't want that, you turn it off. And of course, um, uh, you see how the placement now that's the placement where you want your ad to actually show. Uh, let's see, show more options. This one is to select specific devices, we don't want specific devices. Now, this is if maybe you want, um, uh, maybe you 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 want your ad to show on certain devices, you want your ad to show 
only when it's connected to Wi-Fi, and that is of course that you'll be shooting yourself on the foot if you're doing that. Uh, yeah, so you want to leave all of those stuff, all of those other stuff, and focus on the ad itself, right? So let's say we are done with all of this, and uh, we click on next. Of course, you must have funded your ad account while you're doing all of this. Now you can see new sales ad. You can change the name of this ad. I can't decide, what did I call the please? I can see bubbles ad. Uh, let's see bubbles ad, right? And you can see everywhere it's going to run on Facebook page. Select the page at the asset level. For this ad, you must select the page you represent your business at the asset level. Blah, 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 blah. So I click on select page. Of course, it's the, is this a concrete page that's taking me back to this place? Of course, I selected the page, right? And I don't know why it's taking me back here. So click on next again. So that's the page. The page is already on default. Then of course, this is the Instagram account you want the ad to run on, right? So because I selected Instagram and Facebook, so this ad is also going to run on Facebook. Now you see here, uh, they now said, yeah, more create ad. This is where you now create your ad, right? Um, This is where you choose um the ad, what you want to use for your ad, your creative. Now, what kind of creative do you want? Is it a single image or video? Is it a carousel? A carousel is where you have two or more videos, two or more images, right? That people can scroll, right? Um, so we want to leave it at single image or video. Now, this is multi advertiser ads. It's recommended, but I advise you turn it off. The reason is that multi advertiser ads means that Facebook are going to show your ad alongside other advertisers. So if you still imagine you're running an ad for sales, and you have a product for 10,000 Naira. It's for their own money, right? It's, they tell you recommended, but it's, they want you to make more money. Um, You are running an ad and you, you, you are selling your product for 10,000. Another person is selling that same product that you are selling for 10,000 and the person is selling it for 8,000. Your ad shows. I see your ad. Your ad is nice. I like it. 10,000. The next person comes up and I see 8,000. Who do you think I'll buy from? From the next person. So I... <laughs> I've simply wasted money. So you might want to turn that off. And um, you want to put an ad creative, select the media text and uh, decision for your ad, right? So this one, you want to select what you want to use to run the ad. So let's say you want to add an image. Uh, it's going to select add an image here. Yeah? So these are images already on the account, right? Uh, these are the images already on the account. Unless I want to select this one and I click next. So you can see how it's going to show. Uh, let's select nine to 16, it's too, it's too big. So let's leave the original. You can see how the ad is going to show on different places. You see here uh, uh, in feeding, and this is stories and real search results, right? This is how the ad is going to show on different places, different platforms. Of course, definitely, they just want to show you how that looks like. You can decide to crop it. Uh, of course, you can decide to crop it, but we don't want to do that, right? So let's leave it at this. And then you click on next. And you see here, yeah, allow enhancements. What this means is that um, they will enhance the... Um, the picture to be better. You see image brightness and contrast aspects with you, right? So you have click on done. All of these are new features that they have added. These things were not there before. And yeah, you can see where the ad is going to be placed. 13 placements, right? You can see 13 placements. Um, so you want to add the description of the ad. Now, this is a short headline. Um, let's say don't fall for scams. Let's say this is what we want to use for this ad. Don't fall for scams very short headline and it's going to show you how the headline is even going to appear right um oh, come on show me now so you can see the ad right so let's see is don't fall for scams right you now describe your ad of course you want to be very creative with all of this you put a text um the text is uh let's say many people will come to you uh, many people will tell you, you want to put something very creative. You want to take your time to do this because all of these things will determine how your ad is going to sell to people. Many people will tell you, 
that you have to pay more for fees due to I want to be fast here certain flimsy excuses right and I say do not fall for it right um the the amount or the percentages whatever you want to use as a creative right you can see that you can see how it's appearing that it's also appearing here now people have consumer they want to see these things that rules right you can see how it's going to appear this is how your ad is going to appear on Facebook right now you want to stay away from scams I don't know whatever this is, these are all off the top of my head right you want to be very very meticulous with all of this stuff and of course yeah so you can see it. You see what the the headline is. Don't fall for scam, right? Now you see the, the bottom send message. Now you can see it. You can see the this thing we wrote. Do not fall for it, right? This top this um, text we wrote here, right? And then we come down here, and of course, what is the call to action you want them to do? You select. You can change it. You can see it send message. You can see contact us. You can see apply now, order now, learn more, play game, whatever you want to do as your, your sign up button. Of course, it has to be relevant to the ad you're running. So let's say we leave it as send message. Right? So let's say we leave it. Of course, it's just a test. So you say you leave it at test, send message, right? Um, advanced setup, customize your own template. Yeah, you want to leave all of these things. Now, you see, this is we, we this is we creating a new ad, right? This is we creating a new ad, putting a new ad creative. You can use an existing post. So you see how here yeah, you click on use existing, right? You can use an existing post to also run your, your ad, right? If you click on use existing, uh, it's going to show you to edit. And of course, okay, this is not where it is. But okay, because we're running the ad on Facebook and Instagram, you can still use an existing post, but we don't want to use an existing post. So we want to do something new, right? So this is what we are doing. Stay away from comes blah 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 so you want to ensure that everything is okay and set you look at the preview of where the ad is going to be showing you can see where the ad is going to be showing display this is how it's going to display on feed facebook feed instagram feed facebook marketplace or oh, we choose facebook marketplace right so all the places that they are going to place your ad facebook video feed instagram explore instagram stories and reels instagram stories you see where the ad is going to appear the different places right ads on Facebook Reels. We don't want that. So it's not even going to show there. Search results. So you see how they showed you your placement and all of those stuff. I uh, want to leave all of these other things. Put the URL parameter. You want to leave all of those set up. They are not necessary. Website events, tracking, all of these things. You want to leave them, right? And like this, we are already done with setting up this ad, right? Uh, we are done. We've set up the audience. But you have to take your time. Don't rush it. This is rushing because I'm trying to show you guys how to do it. Take your time and do it, right? And once you're done, you click on publish. You click on publish. And once you click on publish, the ad is going to be published. Of course, you have to load your account with the amount you want to um, use to run the ad, right? And Facebook takes about 24 hours to approve your ad. Now, they are going to use 24 hours to check um, if the ad um, goes against any of their policies. And if it goes against their policies, they will not allow the ad to run. Right, they will flag it down. If it doesn't go against their policies, they will let your ad run and run comfortably. And they will just check all these things for the ad. And then um, by the time you're done with all of this setup, you click on publish, the ad is going to publish. Let's just click on publish now. Uh, is it going to publish? I'm not supposed to publish this ad, though, but let me just click on publish. Right, so it's publishing. Publishing one of three. Can you see that? Publishing one of three. And the ad is published. What multiple items published? One ad campaign, one answer, and one ad we have published, right? The ad has been published. I do not want to publish this ad, but I'm going to go and turn it off right now. But of course, you are going to review your draft items. 
I clicked on to view the ad to see how it is. Let me not play with this other account because. So, of course, you can see a bubble sales campaign complete, right? Uh, we have finished running the ad and setting up all of this stuff, setting up all of this stuff, so you can see done. And of course, if you want to see the ad, you go to um all tools and then you go to business manager, right? Uh, as ads manager, right? So once you click on ads manager, it's going to take you to the um ads manager place where you're going to see your ad. You see loading ad account here, right? Now, do you see the ad campaign? You see here, yeah, bubble sales campaign. You can see scheduled, right? I just published it, so it's now on schedule. There's no money on that. There's no money on that account, so it's not going to run. I'm going to turn this off because it's not going to work. So you can see it's scheduled, right? And of course, by the time they start reviewing the ad, publishing one of one, it's still publishing. By the time they start reviewing this ad, you're going to see a review here, yeah, right? And then by the time the ad starts running, you're going to see active. This will change to green. Active, meaning the ad is running. You can see this ad is completed. This ad ran and completed for the period of time. Definitely, you must have um, um, loaded your ad account to the amount of funds that are required. The ad account is running the ad. And then they will going to um, declare the ad in review. After they are reviewing, after reviewing the ad, they will now push it out if it doesn't go against any of the strategies, right? And by the time the ad starts running, you can see, of course, you can see the campaign budget, one five daily year. You can see seven day click. You will see the results that the ad is going to give you. You will see the reach where it has gotten to. You see the number of impressions. You can see this one that is completed. You can see all of those stuff. You will see the cost per result, how much it cost them per result to give you, right? And then you're going to see all of this stuff, all of this good stuff here, right? And of course, the ad is scheduled. So that is how you can run your ad in a very simple way from this place. Is there any question? I'm going to leave this one out. Okay, um, today the class is going to end by 12. I'm done. Um, to narrow your target audience to their demographic and interest is better for you. Because align Facebook tools, right? Facebook are doing it for their money. They will not do exactly what you want. I mean, if you know your ad, you know the kind of ad you want to run, you know the kind of business you're running, you know the kind of people that are likely to patronize you, right? You want to ensure that you do it yourself, right? And narrow it down to how you can get better conversion. But align it for Facebook Advantage Plus. Those who will, 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 they want to use their own, they want to do their money, they, will, they need their money. So they will give, give you advantage according to them, but they might not give you what you want because of course it's an AI, it's an algorithm. It might not give you exactly what you want. So that should, you better, I think I would advise that you, Try to narrow it down yourself, narrow down your audience to their demographic, to their interest. And except you don't know, right? Maybe you don't have an idea of all of these things, then you can leave it at advantage plus for them to select it for you. I guess that answers that question. Any other question? Precious Chino, yes, you can ask a question. Precious Chino, yeah, you can ask a question. I can't hear you. Your line is breaking up. Sorry, start over. So is it possible for an ad that is yet to do? Hello, sir. I can hear Hello. you now. I can hear you. I can hear you. Oh, Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. I was asking, prior to the 24 hours, Facebook will approve the um, ad. Is it possible yeah. to stop it? Maybe you had a change of mind. Yes, it's possible. And secondly, what happens oh, yeah. if once ad account is flat down? Is there a way to get it back? Yes, if your ad account is um, restricted for whatever reason that, you, that they restricted it, you can place an appeal. Uh, right, you place an appeal to Facebook. Um, you can, of course, contact their support team. They will <clears throat> run a check on your ad account. 
And of course, sometimes they can decide that they don't even want to put their account back for you. Sometimes it might be to verify your identity. You verify it. Sometimes it might be that you went against some of their policies. And of course, if you went against their policies, um, they might give you some restriction on the ad accounts, but you can always contact them to to um, help you um, review the ad accounts. You can you, most times you have to send email. You can have to you might have to send them through emails for them to help you um, um, or unblock the, or um, um, remove the restriction from the ad account. And that email you have to be very polite. Whatever I send to them, be very polite to tell them that agree that you are at fault, right? <laughs> most times, better agree that you are at fault. Tell them you are at fault that you notice that you went against one of their policies, blah, 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 and that um, you're so sorry that you, um, you it was a mistake on your part that you're not going to um, go against that again and that you're going to take out the ad, blah, blah, blah. Just try to just make the message polite enough and they will review it. And maybe within, of course, sometimes it takes up to one week, sometimes sometimes even a month before your ad account can be removed. But sometimes, of course, it depends on how you do it. They can even unblock your ad account in a day. Right, so that's it. Any other question? You want to contribute? Okay, um, you can contribute. Okay, thank you so much. Um, what I want to contribute there is based on a question. Um, okay. At first, before you open a page, talk more of running an ad it is advisable for you to use your real name. Don't just fake the name you use on yeah. Facebook. Because if not, when it is um, when your account is being blocked, they'll ask you for your ID. And if it doesn't tally, um, if it doesn't tally, rather, um, you won't be able to get your account back. Yes, thank you for that. Thank you so much, Ahir. Thank you, that's a very important contribution i almost forgot that you want to use your real name right <clears throat> to open the ad account or to create anything right so that um and that's why it's also advisable that you also use your real name for your facebook account for your facebook registration because they want to be sure that it is your ad account it is your own it is you that owns it right so when they ask for verification you show them your id let the name tally if it tallies definitely if it doesn't tally they might not but they, they, they will not even listen to you, right? So you want to take that into consideration. Is that all? Seifa, are you there? Can you hear me? Ivy, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, you are asking a question. I'm saying if you are there, I'm done. I've asked them if they are okay. Okay. Yes, which type of ID? Um, NIN, you can use your NIN. Of course, it should be a very a it should be a, an ID that is recognized, right? NIN, um, passports. Um, driver's license, um, what else? NIN and uh, what do they call it? Voter's card, right? PVC can also work. So any other question? <clears throat> 